Hey everyone. So I realized that I've been meaning to put together this video on how to build a slightly more robust workflow. I've mentioned it in a few blog posts, but I thought I'd do something a little bit more uh, dedicated to the actual process. So what you're seeing in front of you is a really simple workflow, right? Nothing special here. What we're doing is we're querying a user profile and we're just logging whatever the value is uh, that we get back using in text workflow. Now, if I pop into the query user profile action, you'll see here, I'm querying information about a user called Eden Stafford. So I've hard coded it in. You know, usually I don't recommend that, but this is just as a uh, demo. And I'm pulling out the account name, which I pulled from here. I picked the account name, clicked on add, and I'm storing it in a uh, variable called text account name. Now here's the problem. If this workflow runs and, it, and there's no problems and the server's fine, it's gonna run and it's gonna run successfully. But if there's some sort of issue with the server, maybe there's a problem with user profile service, maybe it's down, uh, maybe, you know, maybe there's some sort of permissions issue with the, with the user profile service, whatever it is, there's some sort of issue, this workflow will come to a crashing halt. It won't actually get to this log action, it will just fail. So if you have slightly more complex workflows, which is most likely you do, you don't generally have these little two action workflows, you have something a little bit more complex, what you want to do is make sure that the workflow is a little bit more robust and caters for situations like that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pop into this action and down the bottom, you'll see there's an error handling section. You'll see there's a capture errors, store error occurrence in and store error text in. Now capture errors is, do I want to capture if an error actually occurred? Now in this case, yes, I do. Do I want to store that an error actually occurred? Right, it's a little different to the first one. This is just telling the action to capture the error. And this is actually saying, I want to store whether an actual error occurred or not. So let's go in here. We'll create a new variable. It'll be a yes, no variable. And we'll just call it a bool. So boolean error occurred. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the default to yes. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So close that. And now we can store that. So basically, if an error occurred, it's going to capture it and it's going to store the fact that an error occurred into this variable. Now, do we also want to capture the error message? Yeah, in some cases, you will, because maybe you want to notify somebody. So let's create another variable called just a single line of text. And we'll just say error message. OK. And then we store the error message in there. So now, if this workflow hits this query user profile action and the user profile service is down for some reason and this action fails, it actually will not cause the workflow to fail. The problem is it's going to jump into this log in the history list action and it's going to assume that everything works successfully. So what we want to do is make this a little bit smarter. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add a loop action. Oops. Let's drag that onto there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to continue looping while that Boolean uh, variable is set to yes. So basically, and that's the reason why I actually uh, configured that variable originally with a default value of yes. So we're going to say, set my Boolean. We're saying, if it's equal to yes, I want to continue through this loop, All right? So. And I usually like to add a little bit of text here. So we'll just say continue, oops, continue looping while error exists. Then we'll drop that query user profile action in there. Now, here's something for you guys to know. So right in here, right at the very top, that Boolean variable is going to be set to yes. It's going to assume that an error has occurred. That's going to cause the loop to actually go and run whatever's inside it, which is the query user profile, right? So first time it's going to run it. If an error occurs, it's going to come back around. That Boolean variable is going to be set, still set to yes. It's going to come back around and it's going to try again, right? If on the other hand, query user profile action works successfully and everything is good, that Boolean variable will be set to no. That means when it comes back around here, it's going to jump out of the loop and then it's going to run our log in the history list action. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty easy to do. Now, one more thing to think about. Hopefully you guys have safe looping enabled in your on-prem environment. That means that every time through this loop, there'll be a five minute delay. 
right? Uh, anywhere from a one to five minute delay. That means you don't have to worry about putting the loop into here, because what you don't want to do is have a loop with safe looping turned off. It'd be query user profile, it failed. Try it again, try it again, try it again. It's going to just basically continue trying it over and over and over again until, uh, you know, forever basically using up as much CPU as it can. So if you have safe looping turned off, then what I would recommend is add another couple of actions. Add a little run if in here. The run if will check whether an error occurred. So we'll, it's just like an extra layer of checking. So we're saying if an error occurred, then we're going to add a pause action in here. So basically down here, we'll just say, did error occur? Delay until next retry. All right, so pretty straightforward. All right, we're just gonna go in here, check to make sure that variable is set to yes or true. Try the user profile. If it worked, it's going to skip through this run if because an error didn't occur. It's going to jump out of the loop and we're going to log whatever the value is that uh, that we logged. In this case, I think I'm logging the account name variable. Yeah, so pretty straightforward there. So there you go. Now, what I'd recommend is don't necessarily have this type of logic around every single action that has error handling in it, right? Uh, if, you, if you have um, a web service call that you're calling SharePoint, a SharePoint web service, there's a pretty pretty good chance that that's going to work. If it's actually going to fail, it's more likely to do with the configuration of the action rather than something on the back end. Because since the workflow is running inside SharePoint, you're pretty much guaranteed that the workflow, uh, the web service call is going to work, right? If it's calling a web service inside SharePoint. Like I said, if it's a configuration issue, then this type of logic is not going to help you because you need to actually terminate your workflow, fix the configuration issue in the workflow, republish it, and rerun it. So it's a little bit different, different type of scenario. But hopefully this helps. Uh, I'm not going to add a downloadable workflow for this because this is not going to work in your environment anyway because the query user profile would need to be uh, reset. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how to make your workflow a little bit more robust. So these are the two uh, variables that you need. A yes, no variable called error occurred, set it to a default of yes, and text error message. Where you would use a text error message might be something like, if an error occurred, you might want to send a notification to somebody like a task to say you need to go and fix this user profile service. And what you might do is as you go into this task action, go into the task notification and say, let's come up here and go, uh, tried to perform a user profile query and received this error. Of course, I can't spell because it's a Monday morning. And then you insert a reference and you insert your error message. That way, somebody's going to get assigned a task and they'll get notified exactly what the issue was and they'll be able to look into it and hopefully fix it really quickly. So there you go. Pretty straightforward to start making your workflows a little bit more robust. Hope that helps everybody out. If you have any questions, feel free to add them to the comments at the bottom of the blog post. Thanks very much.